All right, all right, okay. So, as I've stated before, that the the energy of the media heat or like public flack when you when you take heat and general flack and backlash from the public, it focuses on many different people over the course of a short period of time. So one day Kevin Hart catches backlash for making, you know, gay jokes. You know, he's getting ready to host the Oscars and then they dig up a tweet that he made back from 2012 or 13 and he made a gay joke about something. They didn't like that. And so they they basically demonized him for it temporarily. And then what seemed to be the very next day, Dave Chappelle, he catches back backlash for transgender jokes. Then the next day, you have Chris Rock, who makes a joke about Jada Pinkett at the Oscars. And then, of course, obviously, in the same incident, Will Smith catches the greater backlash because he went up there and hit him. Then there's Candace Cameron, who catches backlash for stating that she was going to do her network or a movie that was, I guess, supposed to be all... This one, I'm kind of paraphrasing it. It had to do with all Christian or all, how do I say it? Basically, it was it was implied that it excludes people who are LGB or something like that, something along those lines. And this is just the backlash that she received. And keep in mind, I'm a Christian, by the way. I just I just want to make that clear. Don't don't think that I'm not. So there's that. And then I just did a segment the other day where I was talking about how Drew Barrymore and Bill Maher and Jennifer Hudson caught backlash because they decided to continue their shows while the writer strikes are going on. And what did I say in that video? I said, you know what? This is only going to be hot for a split second. The very next day or a couple days later, the backlash is going to be on somebody else. Well, guess what? <laughs> now the backlash is on somebody else. Two other people in particular. So... As I talked about in the last video, Danny Masterson, who's the actor who's best known for his role as Stephen Hyde in That 70s Show, uh, he was recently convicted of two counts of rape, and he was sentenced to 30 years to life. Now, here's what I see according to Rolling Stone and a few other sources that Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher vouch for a convicted rapist Danny Masterson in sentencing letters. Now, I'll tell you right now, a lot of the responses to this are not good. This is not looking good for them. But again, now keep in mind, I did see something afterwards that said that they apologized for the letters and I'm gonna get to that in a second. So I wanna read to you the letter that Ashton Kutcher wrote to the judge and then the letter that Mila Kunis wrote to the same judge. Here's what Ashton said. Honorable Judge Almedo, or Almedo. I really think it's Almedo. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Notice how on this show there's a lot of names I come across that I've only seen written but not heard pronounced. So if I'm mispronouncing the names, I'm sorry about that. My name is Ashton Kutcher. I am an actor, investor, philanthropist, and most importantly, a father. I met Danny Masterson when I was 20 years old in 1998. He instantly became a friend, dedicated co-worker, and role model to me, and has remained as such for 25 years. As a friend, Danny has been nothing but a positive influence on me. He's an extraordinarily honest and intentional human being. Over 25 year relationship, I don't ever recall him lying to me. He's taught me about being direct and confronting issues in life and relationships head on, resolving them and moving forward. Danny is a person that is consistently there for you when you need him. We've traveled around the world together, raised our daughters together and shared countless family moments. Not only is he a good friend to me, I've witnessed him be a good friend to others and the kind of brother others would be lucky to have. 
As a role model, Danny has consistently been excellent to me. I attribute not falling into the typical Hollywood life of drugs directly to Danny. Anytime we were to meet someone or interact with someone who was on drugs or did drugs, he made it clear that he wouldn't be a good person. He made it clear that wouldn't be a good person to be friends with. And for me, that was an implication that if I were to do drugs, he wouldn't want to be friends with me, which is something I never would want to risk or jeopardize. I am grateful to him for that positive peer influence. He also set an extraordinary an extraordinary standard around how you treat other people. There was an incident where we were at a pizza parlor and a belligerent man entered who was berating, who was berating his girlfriend. We had never met or seen these people before, but Danny was the first person to jump to the defense of this girl. It was an incident he didn't have to get involved in, but I'm sorry, I'm kind of zooming in a bit right here because the writing is kind of small. He didn't have to get involved in, but proactively chose to because the way this man was behaving was not right. He has always treated people with decency, equality, and generosity. After 9-11, Danny was a huge advocate for support of the firefighters affected by the event, rallying his friends and co-workers to pitch in however they could. Danny had his daughter a year before I had mine. He set a standard of being a hands-on dad. We have spent countless hours together with our kids, and he is among few people that I would trust to be alone with my son and daughter. He's also a dedicated and loyal husband with unwavering commitment to his wife. We have spent hundreds of hours working together. Danny takes his job seriously. He is kind, courteous, and hardworking. He treated everyone from the grips to the teamsters, to the actors, to the caterers as equals. He showed up on time all the time and always pulled his weight. We have also traveled around the world together promoting our work. I can honestly say that no matter where we were or who we were with, I never saw my friend be anything other than the guy I have described. All right. So, you know what? I'll tell you this. And to be fair, I, since I just learned about this whole thing less than an hour ago, probably less than 30 minutes ago, <laughs> again, I don't know if there was any televised trials or whatnot. But let, again, I haven't seen anything. Nobody posted any clips or nobody. I haven't seen that. So let's just assume nothing was recorded or televised. So I'm not a part of the trial. Obviously, I'm in no connection with anybody that was involved there. No judge, no prosecutor, no defense attorney, no jury members, none of that stuff. So and again, keep in mind, there were three women who accused him of rape, two of which he got convicted for. And then one was a hung jury that resulted in a mistrial or retrial or however that goes right there. I mean, I've, I've seen it was worded differently on different sources. So apparently he was, it didn't get to a point where he was found guilty on girl number three, but girls number one and two, yeah, he was guilty. Now, I don't know how that happened. I don't know why one verdict was different than the others. Um, I have no proof whether or not he actually did this to those women. I also don't prove I, I also don't have any proof that he didn't do anything to any of these women. Um, one thing I will say is this. If. If. If he actually did something to them and all the allegations are true, the women are telling the truth. And again, he's doing his time for it. Well, I mean, yeah, you could say. It's one thing to sit there and say, hey, I've worked with this guy for a long time and, you know, we've traveled the world together. We've promoted work together. We raised our kids together. You know, he trusts me around his kids. I trust him around my kids and he's treated. We got mutual friends and he's treated people with respect. OK, fine. That's fair to say that. But but if he actually raped somebody, clearly the person that he raped, that person didn't feel the same way. I don't. I, how can you rape somebody and respect them? Now, again, I, I, I want to make this clear to everybody who's listening to this. I'm not saying that I know for a fact that he actually raped the women. So I'm not jumping to the bandwagon of, oh, they said this, so I'm automatically, like, oh, he's a rapist. Again, he denied the allegation and he's, his lawyer is saying that, you know, they're trying to push for the conviction to be overturned. And, and again, I know this is kind of sound like rambling. I know this is complex, but 
Let's also be fair on the other side, just because a conviction was overturned or that doesn't mean that for sure that the conviction wasn't legitimate because there is such a thing as wrongful convictions. And there's also such a thing as, you know, this person actually did it. And they there's a, there's just as much of a possibility of you got wrongful convictions and you also have wrongful acquittals or you have wrong mistrials or whatever. So nobody has the exact unless there's like photo or video evidence of I mean, I don't know. Most of you watching this, you don't know either. So I'm just saying, if he happened to rape the women, then clearly those people, those women that he raped are excluded from the list of people that he has shown all this respect to. I mean, I'm just throwing that out there. And listen, I mean, you, you know what they say, you do the crime, you do the time. And if he didn't want to do the time, then assuming that he did the crime, he shouldn't have done that. Just throwing that out there. I mean, I'm still kind of just, I'm surprised about not just that all this is happening, but just I'm just now learning about this two weeks later. Again, I received no notification about this. I did not receive uh, nobody on Facebook talked about it or any person that I've talked to or we've I haven't seen anything. No Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, nothing. So now. Here's what Mila Kunis had to say about it. I'm going to read this letter to you and then I'm going to read to you the comments of the people who responded to the letter. And as I stated, most of it is not good. Here's what Mila said. I am writing this character letter on behalf of my dear friend, Danny Masterson, with whom I have had the privilege of sharing a significant part of my life. My name is Mila Kunis. I am an actress and I believe it is essential to share the remarkable influence Danny has had on my life and the lives of others. I first met Danny during our time working together on That 70s Show. And from the very beginning, I could sense his innate goodness and genuine nature. Throughout our time together, Danny has proven to be an amazing friend, confidant, and above all, an outstanding older brother figure to me. His caring nature and ability to offer guidance has been instrumental in my growth, both personally and professionally. One of the most remarkable aspects of Danny's character is his unwavering commitment to discouraging the use of drugs. His influence on me in this regard has been invaluable. In an industry where the pressures and temptations of substances of substance use can be overwhelming, Danny played a pivotal role in guiding me away from such destructive paths. His dedication to avoiding all substances has inspired not only me, but also countless others in our circle. Danny's steadfastness, steadfastness, steadfastness is in promoting a drug-free lifestyle has been a guiding light in my journey through the entertainment world and has helped me prioritize my well-being and focus on making responsible choices. His genuine concern for those around him and his commitment to leading by example make him an outstanding role model and friend. Danny's role as a husband and father to his daughter has been nothing short of extraordinary. Witnessing his interactions with his daughter has been heartwarming and enlightening. He prioritizes his family, education, and happiness above all else, demonstrating his unwavering commitment to being a loving and responsible parent. As a father, he leads by example, instilling in her values that reflect integrity, compassion, and respect for others. Moreover, Danny has consistently displayed a profound sense of responsibility and care for those around him. He demonstrates grace and empathy in every situation, be it within the under within the entertainment industry, or in our personal lives. His steady support and understanding presence make him a reliable source of guidance and comfort for all of us. His warmth, his humor, and his positive outlook on life have been a driving force in shaping my character and the way I approach life's challenges. His unwavering commitment to being an exceptional older brother figure to me has had a transformative impact on my life instilling in me a sense of self-belief and encouraging me to aim for greatness, but all while maintaining a sense of humility. All right. Again, like I said, in so basically she, her letter is almost identical to Ashton's. And my response is the same. If he did what he is accused of, I mean, it, it's almost like I'm saying like all that stuff that they said about him, it's like, it's not that it completely goes out the window, but at the same time, it kind of does. Like, that, that's... I mean, listen. 
if everything that they said about him is true in regards to how he treats other, listen, as a person who is a liberal and as a person who is supportive to things like, hey, listen, if he was really compassionate, if he was really, you know, outstanding and outgoing and he encouraged people to not do drugs and he's a great actor, great father, great, you know, husband, great brother, you know, great son, nephew or whatever, who, who good relative to his relatives. That's all good. That's all great. Props to that. Amazing. But, but if he actually raped somebody, that part isn't acceptable. Now, here's what I want the people watching this show and watching my segment on this. I need you to understand this. I don't want you to jump to any bandwagon. So, I mean, if, feel free to disagree. If you think that he didn't do anything, I mean, hey, that's fine. Because nobody has any proof one way or the other. And we had the same, again, there's a lot of celebrities in Hollywood that have been accused of a lot of things. And there's plenty of it that I believe. And there's others I don't believe or question. And there's some that are kind of in the middle and it's half and half. So, I mean, I don't know. So here's the part I want to get to. This is according to... So this, these are the comments in response to Rolling Stone. And as you can tell, you know, with Facebook, you can like a post or you can love a post or you can, you know, care for the post or you got the, the wow face, like surprise, shock. And then you have the sad face, which is crying. And then you have the, the mad, angry face. Most of the responses I see on here are the mad, angry faces. How many of those do I see? 216. And with everything else, like, wow, laugh, it's 70 and below. That means that most of the people that see this are angry about this. One person said, gross. One person says, I don't know who supports a rapist. One person here made a comment that said, I'm sure Jeffrey Dahmer's co-workers could have wrote letters vouching for him too. He was a quiet guy and a real hard worker. I mean, like, wow. Like, okay. <laughs> I mean, in this crazy world, <clears throat> excuse me, you never know. This is exactly why character references are completely irrelevant in sexual assault cases. Courts should stop accepting them. Just because he was, a, just because he was good to you doesn't make him any less an abuser. Okay, now, on that comment, <clears throat> excuse me, I don't know what's going on with my throat tonight. Just forget that. On that particular comment, now here's how I want to respond to that. I agree, I pretty much I agree with that. And let me just give you a brief anecdote right here. Let me, let me just tell you something from a personal, again, I'm digressing a little bit, but let me just give you an example of something. And again, this is another instance where I have no exact proof, but just based on a few other factors, it doesn't look right. And I'm not going to say the person's last name. I think I could just say the first name because the first name is so common. It can refer to anybody. I would say in 2014 and prior to that, I was I was friends or buddies with a guy named Ryan. And, you know, just regular. All right. Cool guy. Just somebody to hang around with every now and again here. I wouldn't say one of my closest friends, but he was somebody that I just saw sometimes. You know, he was all right. Now. One day I'm at work. And somebody texts me, somebody messaged me on Facebook and said, hey, do you know Ryan such and such? I said, yeah. He says, uh, the police are, he said something along the lines of the police are on the lookout for him because he, you know, he raped my girlfriend and he's basically is like, hey, when I see him, I will you know, beat the hell out of him or whatever. So just basically a threat. I'm saying that in a nice way, by the way. Obviously, he said something worse, but I'm just be, trying to be nice about it because I'm trying to keep it PG on the show right here. And so I told him, I said, oh, well, if that's, wow, I did not know that. I didn't know, hear anything about that. And so guess what? Since that day, between that time and now, I have not seen or heard from Ryan once. <clears throat> Sorry about this, people. And I'm not saying that that's proof that Ryan was a rapist, but 
I mean, the fact that I haven't seen or heard from him since then, and that was in the spring or summer of 2014. I mean, and I, since then, like, I think I tried to reach him or I was trying to look for him or something. So no traces on Facebook, nothing on Twitter, nothing on Instagram, no YouTube channel, uh, no phone number, no valid phone number, never had his email. It's just like nothing. There's no way to find this guy. Like, no. And so that tells me one of two things. He, they must have got him and they, they got, jailed him and they imprisoned him. Or maybe he fled the state because he knew he was going to get caught. He knew the jig was up. Or worst case scenario, and I hate to say it, but I mean, it's, it's a reality. I mean, he could have passed away. I mean, I, I don't know. But either way, haven't seen or heard from him since then, and I'm no longer interested in being in contact with him. So, so yeah, he never actually did anything bad to me, or he never said anything bad to me. But that doesn't mean that he didn't say or do something bad to somebody else. So therefore, I'm not going to say, I can sit there and say, yeah, he was cool. He was an all right person. But that was then, and I'm not, I can't say that now. So just throwing that out there. This person says, I get that he was a longtime friend of theirs, but sometimes silence is golden. Some people will leave your side as soon as there is a sign or trouble. A true friend sticks by you. Okay, this looks like, okay, so I see 25 replies underneath that. That looks like an argument. I don't feel like doing that right now. So let's skip that. I got enough arguments going on on my page as it is. So forget that. This person says, I want to know more about this case. Was there evidence to support the accusations? I'm curious. Okay, now that's a legit question. And that's a question I have. I want to, I, I wish there was a, and this tells me right here, there was no televised trial. So I'm curious to know what all was involved in this, what all was involved in the, the, the documents as far as the, the, the prosecution, what did they lay to the table, how they present the case to the judge, what did the defense attorney say, all that stuff. Um, Holly weird rapos stick together. Okay. Um, all right. All right. Nothing is ever black and white. Funny how a no-name entertainer gets 30 years, but other well-known pedophiles and rapists get nothing. This one was simply for pity votes to say they put people away for rapes. My opinion is it's not long enough, and there are many others he learned this from in the industry. Hmm. My opinion, it's not long enough. And listen, I first of all, they put away Harvey Weinstein. They put away Bill Cosby. Again, it's not like I have the... I don't have a complete list in front of me right now of all the celebrities who were charged slash indicted slash convicted of, you know, rape or any other, you know, murder, whatever it may be. So, I mean, I don't know how accurate that statement is. But, and again, they're saying no name entertainer. This is not a, I mean, he's not a no namer. I mean, that 70s show, which to tell you the truth, I didn't even really watch it that much. I mean, I just saw it time to time. That was a big show at its time. And anybody who starred in that show, I mean, of course, they that show kind of brought their names a little bigger. I don't know who all started on the show or whatnot. But, I mean, if a show is popular and somebody stars in the show, I wouldn't say that that person is a no-namer. Now, he may not be an A-list star. He might be a B-lister. You know, he might be on the level of like a Mariska Hargitay, Chris Maloney type person, Dan Flora, Diane Neal, whatever. But, I mean, again, at the end of the day, a crime is a crime. And rape is rape. And I think that if you're famous and you commit rape, you get the same amount of time as a non-famous person who commits a rape. If if Danny Masterson was not a celebrity and he was just some uh, person who was at a bar nearby in some small, no-name, unimportant town, if he was up the street from me or something and he did the same thing, then, of course, I think he should get the same time. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, have a lot of people gotten away with it? Of course. And it's unfortunate. But, I mean, what can we do? We can't control the legal system. It's just... Again, it goes back to the same thing. Don't do the crime if you don't want to do the time. 
This person right here says, can't wait till Ashton Kutcher reveals it was a prank. Greatest episode of Punked ever. If something like that happened, that would be a huge, that would be like, wow. That helped him. X fan, shame, so sad. One person says free Danny. Okay. The hypocrisy. What is this right here? Luckiest. All right. All right. That's some. I don't know where they put that link to there. Some movie. Um. Now prosecute the church that protected him. This one says diddlers stick together. This one says big yikes. Freaks. Okay. Now, let me do one more in here. I know that this video is a little bit longer than I intended it to be, but so... Here's what Christina Ricci had to say. According to Now This. Actress Christina Ricci shared an Instagram story on September 9th urging people to believe victims following the revelation that Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis wrote letters in support of their former co-star Danny Masterson after he was found guilty of raping two women in the early 2000s. Danny Masterson was sentenced 30 years to life in prison on September 7th. And today's the 20th, and I'm just now finding out about this. I still can't get past that. I'll never get past that in life. Okay, I'm just playing. So sometimes, this is what she said. Christina Ricci wrote, So sometimes people we have loved and admired do horrible things. They might not do these things to us, and we only know who they were to us, but that doesn't mean that they didn't do the horrible things to discredit the, the, and to discredit the abused is a crime. People we know as awesome guys can be predators and abusers. It's tough to accept, but we have to. If we say we support victims, women, children, men, boys, then we must be able to take this stance. Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis apologized on September 9th for any pain they might have caused by writing the letters, which asked the judge for leniency in sentencing Masterson. In his publicly shared letter, Ashton Kutcher described Masterson as a role model and a positive influence. In a separate letter, Mila said that Danny was an amazing friend, confidant, and above all, an outstanding older brother figure to me. In the video, Ashton Kutcher said that they wrote the letter to represent the person that we knew for 25 years. They were intended for the judge to read and not to undermine the testimony of the victims or re-traumatize them in any way, Kutcher said. We would never want to do that. And we're sorry if this has taken place. Our heart goes out to every single person who's been a victim of sexual assault, sexual abuse, or rape, Mila concluded. And some more comments. This person said, bet you wouldn't catch, bet you wouldn't catch Kutcher and Q and is leaving their kids in his care for any length of time. I do wish we could. There has been too many stories that were made up. Now, this person here says, why should we believe anyone is a victim without evidence? That's madness. OK, that's fair. That's a fair statement because. You have to remember, there was a lot of debate about. Remember when the Cosby allegations first came out and you had at least a third of the country saying he did it. They jumped on the bandwagon. If he did it, a third of the country automatically was, oh, no, he didn't do that. How could he have done? Uh, these women are liars. And then, of course, there was the rest of the country and a lot of people who probably didn't care one way or the other if they didn't pay attention to the case or maybe they were half and half or undecided or conflicted or whatever. But this happens with every single case, no matter who it is, Bill Cosby, Harvey, I really don't even want to include Harvey Weinstein's name in that, but that uh, now we got this right here with Danny Masterson. So, I mean, this person right here says 
Mila Kunis has been a main character on the show Family Guy for over 20 years. Family Guy has a main character named Quagmire who is an unapologetic rapist. They have another character called Herbert who's loosely based on Rupert Murdoch who is an unapologetic pedophile. In Family Guy's history, there have been over 400 rape jokes. There have been jokes mocking victims and there have been jokes implying that it's okay to pursue sexual relationships with children. Family Guy is one of the most popular shows on television and has a very strong theme of pro-rape culture. It's absolutely absurd to think that Mila cares about rape victims. Um, I wasn't expecting that one. I don't know how to totally respond to that. <sighs> to me, that that almost here's what I want to say. Here's what I want to say. I'm gonna have to take a drink after that one. By the way, that's pop, not alcohol, so don't worry. Um, I know this is kind of digressing from the initial topic, but let me just say this right quick. And I really kind of wanted to save this for another video. But that show, along with many other adult cartoons that are very similar to it, The Simpsons, South Park, American Dad, shows like that, even a little bit of King of the Hill, I would say to a degree, that they make jokes about all different type of things. It doesn't mean that that's necessarily the thing that they're promoting. For example, Family Guy is also a Democrat-leaning show that makes fun of Republicans all the time. They poke fun at Republicans, doesn't make them Republicans or that that means that they like Republicans. I would almost make the argument to say, and forgive me if it sounds wrong, but with their, with their saying that these different characters in here who are pedophiles, rapists, whatever, I don't know that that necessarily means that that's a promotion of rape or a promotion of pedophilia. I, I don't know that. Um, so, Again, but that, that's it. So Mila Kunis and Ashton Kutcher are now the, the victims of media backlash, just so to say. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But that's that. So now let's see who the backlash is going to hit tomorrow or the day after. Who is it going to be next? I mean, just random names on Hollywood, people. I mean, is it going to be somebody on SVU? Is it going to be somebody from Criminal Minds or NCIS or what? So that's it, people. Danny Masterson, Mila, Mila Kunis, Ashton Kutcher. A world of craziness right here.